I am uh, back with you from my home office. I've got Lakshmi behind me. I don't know if you can see her. This is a beautiful tapestry that my dear friend, Dr. Deborah Kern, gave me a couple years ago. And uh, I always get the question when I do my Facebook Lives in front of Lakshmi of where she came from uh, and where you can get one too. And she came from Amazon. So you can get a beautiful Lakshmi on Amazon. And then I uh, had her framed because I felt that she really deserved that that honoring. So today I want to talk to you about the art of the to-do list and how to, to make one that actually gets things done. So we, you know, I think that um, the to-do list is like an obsession in our culture. I've been making lists, you know, my whole life really. Uh, when I was little, I would make lists of like, I had a little schedule of which one of my um, stuffed animals got to sleep with me different nights because I didn't want anyone to feel bad and then I had a whole list of who my little friends were and which days I was gonna have which play dates with them and so scheduling and to-do lists has always been a pastime of mine it's something I love and it's something I'm now uh, moving into teaching more and more because I really do believe that the way to optimize our lives is actually not through time management, as we've been told, it's through managing our energy. And the way to best manage our energy is through practices of planning and scheduling. So to become what I'm calling an energy empress, you need to get really good at managing your energy and also knowing how to become the source of time. And I will talk about how to become the source of time on a different Facebook Live, but I do wanna say in terms of the art of the to-do list that actually gets things done there, I wanna just show you mine and, and teach you kind of like what I do every single week. And this has been some, a practice that I implemented um, probably six months ago, a new approach to the to-do list. And I have to tell you, it's really revolutionized um, my business, you know, I used to feel like I had all these notebooks and my to-dos were like all over sticky notes, all over my desk. They weren't in one place. They were like halfway in Basecamp, which is our project management software. And then some of them would live like on a list somewhere. And then I was using my inbox as a to-do list kind of. And then I had like five different notebooks. And then, you know, it just was really disorganized. And I don't know if you can relate. Let me know um, if you can relate to feeling like, you never have this this list of a, a central place of what to focus on and and prioritization is something i have struggled with and the the deal is if you say everything's a priority then nothing's a priority and i was listening to my friend james wedmore's podcast the mind your business podcast and he reminded me on there that that prioritization is actually a skill set that you can get better at. So being some people are born better at prioritizing than others. My husband Mike is somebody who's just naturally really great at prioritizing. Um, I am not somebody who's naturally great at prioritizing, but I'm getting better and better every day. And that's why I think I'm perfectly suited to teach you because it's not something that comes naturally to me. So because it is not something that comes naturally to me, I am learning right alongside you and hopefully I can better explain it than somebody for whom it comes as naturally as breathing, for example. So I'll just show you my to-do list. It's gonna be backwards, so you know, not like you'll be able to see what this is, but there are a couple of elements um, to a to-do list that actually gets things done. On the very top of my page, so I do this in a blank book and I do a weekly to-do list as opposed to a daily to-do list. Why? Because I'm a mom and I run a business and not every day is the same. And so I find that for me, if I make a daily to-do list, I overwhelm myself because the number of things I can do, I think I can get done in a day is just inaccurate. I can't actually get the amount I think I can do get done in a day, but I can often get it done in a week. And so I like to have a weekly to-do list, so all the things that need to get done this week, and I really discipline myself to only put down the things that actually need to happen this week. 
I don't put down all the things that need to happen, period. I don't put down all the things that need to happen on a certain project or in a given year or the things that I would like to someday happen. I put down the things that need to happen this week because the reality is if I can get the high level things done that need to happen this week that move our projects forward, I'm doing great. Right? I'm doing great. And Mike and I did a um, podcast episode on our on our podcast, the Kate and Mike show the other day, on how we get everything done. So you can learn more on that episode. Um, but I do a weekly to-do list. I do not do a daily to-do list. And I create it on Sunday nights. So the elements of the to-do list that actually gets things done for me, and this has been working really well in my life, which is why I'm sharing it with you. It's a system that I have. So on the top of the page here, I put week of, and this is the week of 42417. So I really like to put the date. And then I put down, so these are the elements. I put the date, the week of. Then I put the phase of my cycle that I'm in. So why, you might ask? Well, because depending on where you are in your cycle, you will be hormonally primed for different kinds of activities in your business and in your life. So I learned a lot about this from my friend Elisa Viti over at flowliving.com. And uh, she has a great app for it called My Flow. And I'm going to be teaching more about this and how it applies to your business in my um, sustainable success workshop, uh, which is free and it's coming up in May. And you can go over to sustainablesuccessworkshop.com to get on the VIP list for that workshop. But um, I write down the phase of my cycle that I'm in because that's kind of the flavor of my week and I want to really optimize my physical energy and optimize what's going on with my brain chemistry because there are certain times of your cycle that are really great for detail-oriented work. There are certain times of your cycle that are really great for um, project planning, for meetings and collaborations, for rest, for sort of data analysis. There's different times that are better for different things. And I'm going to teach all about that in my sustainable success workshop. So anyway, this week I'm in my follicular phase. Follicular is the week after your period. So it's like the springtime of your cycle. So this is a time of new beginnings. I also like to put in the cosmic weather. So the cosmic weather this week is it's a new moon in um, on Wednesday. So the new moon is a time of planting seeds of your desires. It's a really great time for manifesting. So on Wednesday, I will light a candle and I will... Um, say a little prayer and I will sit down and I'll work on my desire list. I'll write out the things that I desire in my new moon manifesting journal, which I have one of those. So I could do a whole other Facebook Live on working with the lunar cycles. But um, if you want me to do that, please feel free to write below, uh, specifically working with the lunar cycles to optimize your business performance. So optimize your productivity, your manifesting, and um, your, uh, what's the other word? profitability. I knew there was another P there. So anyway, so I write down the phase of my cycle that I'm in. I write down what's going on, you know, cosmically. It's also Mercury retrograde um, this week. So that is something I could have added. In fact, I'm going to add it right now. I just know for me, for Mercury retrograde, you know, if things are difficult communication wise or, you know, technology wise, I just know I can chalk it up to Mercury retrograde and just I can like go with the flow a little bit. It's a helpful time to just be relaxed. Then on my to-do list that actually gets things done, I write down my four core desired feelings. And this is from my friend Danielle Laporte's The Desire Map, which you can look that up. But my core desired feelings are sacred, luscious, connected, and expansive. So I ground myself in the phase that I'm in in my cycle what's going on cosmically, and my core desired feelings first. So I let that be the place from which I then write my to-do list. So often we come at our businesses and our lives from the perspective of obligation and what we should be doing. And I have and started to come at it from a place of how do I want to feel what's going on with my body right now and what's going on energetically in the universe to support me. Because when you get into doing a to-do list, we can get really focused on like, oh my God, it's all up to me and there's not enough time and we can get really caught in the there's not enough time loop and we can drop into overwhelm very quickly. And overwhelm is simply feeling like you have too much to do 
and not. weather helps me do is ground in really the more important layer which really is my soul really is my core and really is leaning on the universe not only on my physical capacities and my hormones but also leaning on the universe in, in terms of the cosmos the the moon and the stars what energies are at play to support me because our to-do list we can get really obsessed with oh it's all up to me and I have to do everything and that's really not serving us and so when we lean on sort of the great mother, when we lean on the divine feminine, when we lean on the other forces that are at play here to support us in our to-do list, and I put those things right at the top of my list so that I don't get too caught up in, oh, it's all up to me and it's all my responsibility, which by default, I will always default back to like, oh my God, it's all up to me and no one's helping me. Who else? Like anyone else, can you relate to that? Let me know in the comments. So. Then I write out my priorities um, and my priorities this week are moving. We're moving um, this, this Saturday. So moving is a priority. Um, the sales page copy for the new offering that I am putting out in May. I can't wait to tell you all about it. And then um, working on some of the promotional, promotional emails for that offering. So that's my priority. So I know at any given time, if I have some free time, what I need to focus on is one of those priorities, something regarding moving, something regarding the sales page, or something regarding those promotional emails. Then I just go ahead and I fill in the smaller to-do items below that, again, for the week. I never let myself fill in more than this page. Why? Because there's no freaking way I'm going to get done more than what's on this page. In fact, there are many weeks when I don't get done what's just on the page. So I limit it to what's on the page and you can see it's a Monday. I have a few extra spots here that might get filled in throughout the rest of the week. But for the most part, it's just going to be these items, especially because I know we're moving and I've blocked off Thursday and Friday to pack. Okay. So again, the elements are the date the phase of your cycle, if you do cycle. If you don't cycle, don't worry. The moon is the same, like the lunar phases are the very same phases as the menstrual cycle, and you can tap into the very same energy as each phase of the menstrual cycle if you follow the phases of the moon. The four phases of the moon overlay, they're the exact same phases as your menstrual cycle, and so you can use the moon as your guide, so don't feel bad if you don't have a uterus or you know, if you're not in your cycling years or whatever you might have going on, don't worry about it. If you're pregnant, you know, um, you can just use the moon. So for everybody, it's the new moon this Wednesday, April 26th, and that is a flavor of your week. It's a time of stillness, of going within, of manifesting, of asking for what you desire for, for everybody, no matter where you are in your cycle. Then I write down um, my core desired feelings then I write down my three priorities. I don't write down more than three priorities because if I have more than three priorities, it's suddenly not a priority anymore. So there really only can be three priorities at any given time. And I've gotten so good at this being a mom. I just like, I know that there's a lot of my week that I can't control because Penelope might be cranky or not sleep or get sick or whatever. And so I try to really minimize the amount that I am prioritizing so that when I have the times to work, when Penelope's at daycare or I have a little time after bedtime or whatever or during a nap, I can zero right in on what needs to get done and I'm not sitting at my desk being like, what should I be working on? And then like getting lost in my email and letting that be my to-do list because that, my friend, is the kiss of death, letting your inbox be your to-do list. That is a no-no. That guaranteed if you use your inbox as your to-do list, you will be uh, beholden to other people's agendas and you will never get your priorities on your schedule if you let your inbox rule your life. Okay, and then I just write in the things that need to get done for the week and I don't let them go beyond this page. So that is the to-do list that actually, the art of the to-do list that actually gets things done. So again, if this is appealing to you, please head over to sustainablesuccessworkshop.com where I'm going to teach you how to manage your energy, why time management is actually a waste of time, how to tap into the four phases of either the lunar cycle or your menstrual cycle to optimize your productivity and your profitability, um, and how to really tap into this whole idea of 
doing less in order to achieve more. So that's a free workshop, starts May 9th. Head over to sustainablesuccessworkshop.com and I will see you there. Bye.